Has anyone ever confessed to you that they've committed murder? Yeah. <laughs> what if you had a client that went on to commit mass murder? And then they call me. <laughs> uh, so bro. I was charged with assault on a family member. Assault, buying a girl, doing a killer, and they should expose your plan. Yeah, you just kind of cringe like giving a book with you. And uh, how much prison time are you looking at? 10 years, bro. 10 years. 20 years for each prescription. So that's over 100 years. And why am I the best lawyer? You got my case? Shay, a lot of people that are like outside of law, of course, like like Normandy, I, I feel like um, they look at this and they probably think like, oh, easy or like cool or like harder. It's just gonna, it's gonna spit in the face of like everybody that works in this profession. It makes everybody look, look fucking stupid. It's like a, a spit in the face of fucking, of like, uh, of law itself, literally. Like, I'm pretty sure like when you think of like the law, it's like engineering, like you took like a, you did like an oath or whatever, right? That pretty much goes like against that, that, that code pretty much. This is so stupid. This is Jay Oma, a criminal defense attorney keeping super villains accused of the worst crimes imaginable out of prison. Because you'll see what it, what it like, what stands for. It's just odd. Man, you got my case is missed. You got my case is missed. Case is missed. Three counts of murder? I saw on a pregnant person. Pregnant woman. Anybody can be charged with that. You can be charged with that. Um, what were you charged with? Terroristic threat. Terroristic threat? All right, so, um, you know, you're looking up to 20 years in prison on this case. But how does he manage to keep all of these alleged criminals out of jail? And why does he fight every jail? Chat, chat, you know what he's doing. You know what he's doing. Like, you're just being complete obtuse and just cringe if you're denying what was happening. Check these people in the court of law. Dude, what are you doing back here? I don't know, man. I don't know if a do this to my head, like, and she poked me in my head. Can I really get put out of three feet? I'm talking about those. And Dude, nothing wrong. You can do your job without like smiling and like 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 boasting about getting a dub, like like in that way, or whatever. Like you you can still do your job and offer that service without without representing it that way. One of you understand how that works. It sounds like self-defense. You can't keep getting away with it! Does he get a sick pleasure out of winning the impossible cases? Or is Jayoma fighting for something greater? The last 25 years of his life, much of it in prison, has all led up to this moment. The state of Texas versus Daniel Villegas, number 940D09328. Verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daniel Villegas, not guilty of... I'm an innocent man, Your Honor, and I have always been an innocent man. A grown man cry is different from like a fake cry. It's really like he's looking at 20 years. The attorney that I was with, the first thing he said was, don't kill yourself. Oh. And then I uh, see every person who comes across my table is uh, a person who needs help. Yeah, don't snitch on yourself. Do not snitch on yourself. I headed to the city of Houston to meet Jayoma at the Harris County Court, bustling with alleged criminals and their attorneys. How you doing, bro? It's a pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure to meet you too. Who's the best lawyer? Jayoma. <laughs> You're already in it right now. Yeah. So we're just gonna shadow you, see how this plays out. Are we gonna just follow you along? That's fine. So what do you have right here? Are you just assigned like 10 different cases per day? How does this work? You know, um, I agreed to jump onto these cases and whenever I try to jump on these cases, I try to kill. I love what I do, so it's never some type of work to me. This is all fun. All right, what do we got? All right, so I look like an idiot. You're a stupid so like you're branded. Uh, four grams to 200 grams, right? Yes, sir. All right, so um, you know you're looking up to 20 years in prison on this case. Allegations are that you had a girlfriend and that um, you punched her three times when she told you to exit. Not only that, but the cops said that they saw bruises on her left eye. They saw blood all over her face and I mean, like, lacerations. So what I want to tell you is there's no cameras in this shit. Right? Nobody's recording this, right? right? Right to your recollection, nobody's recording it. There's no other witnesses, True. right? It's her word against your word, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you know what really happened? She attacked you. Being accused of theft because of my name. I want to make sure that you know that I only care about you. I don't, I don't care have... about the court. I don't care about the judge. I don't care about the prosecutor. I don't care about witnesses. All I care about is you. All right, so let me tell you, uh, you're charged with assault fan member, okay? That means you're looking at up to a year in Harris County Jail and a $4,000 fine if the prosecutors are successful in convicting you. Not only that, but if there's a conviction, um, it could make it hard for you to get a job or it can interfere with your custody if you have kids. If you get any other future criminal charges, it may increase your punishment. It's very important that I fight this case. She attacked you. You know why she attacked you? It's because you're all in a loving, hating relationship and she decided to punch you. In self-defense, you threw a punch at her. Does that make sense? I mean, just because you're a man, you had to do whatever you can to stop the threat. She was the threat. 
and I want you to put that in your head. It was self-defense. You acted in self-defense. We're going to reset your case to a different date so I can get the evidence, and then I can really work that. What are you thinking about this case? What really happened? What really happened yeah. is what I say happened. She didn't steal. That's all it is. She didn't steal. So I want to tell you that I got your felon in possession weapon yeah, dismissed. Right, so. All right? Yeah, oh. okay, right? So you're, not gonna... you're not looking no, at 20 no. years anymore. Right. 20 years are gone. Right. All right, now we got one more. Yeah, and then so I told you about the other one, right? Yeah. Prosecutors are being a bitch about this, right? Yeah. And they want to sit it for trial, and I said, oh, yeah, let's sit it for trial. And they know what's up. The allegations are this girl is saying that you stole her car, right? That right. car was like $21,000. And she's saying that you said you were gonna bring it back, right? These are all her words. And then about a month later, car got into a crash and you were nowhere near that, all right? You were never driving that car. No, never, you know not she, at all. Yeah, you know, she's making this up, right? You know, because she don't want to pay that She owe. And these prosecutors should know what I'm gonna do. The judge also knows too, because she looked at it. She goes, yeah. oh, we can do this in one day. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for that. I know you is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Before I stepped into your case, the offer was three years. Three years yeah. for you to go to prison. Yeah. That was the offer. And I've never been and in now, prison. since you hired me, I got one of them dismissed. Right. And the other one's on the way to get dismissed too. Because you know I'm gonna do in trial, right? What are you gonna Mike do? Tyson. Fucking, yeah, Mike Tyson then. That's it, it belongs to everybody else who ran. Right. Okay? You understand yes. me? Yeah. It was never on your body, never you were just body. eating. Never. Sounds good? So you're not in possession of that marijuana at all. That's, uh, and you shouldn't be going to jail for something that other people do around you. Does right. that make sense? It, it is not a crime to hang around with people. Right. So we think this is an easy dismissal or what? Yeah. The weed's a crime in Texas? Weed is, yeah, having possession of marijuana, yeah. Oh. In Texas. I don't even know that. <laughs> but I mean, luckily you don't even smoke. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> it's going through your head right now. Man, it's a lot of emotions, but I already know I got Jay on my part by my side. I feel like I feel much more better and comfortable. And real quick, who's the best lawyer? Jay on my man. Jay on the best lawyer. Alan, I'm, I'm hoping for you, man. What's going through your head right now? What's actually going through my head right now is that what he actually said is actually the absolute truth. You got a good lawyer. I'm gonna let you know that. Let's go back in there. We'll be on the Ah, uh, JMO could get a job in creative fiction. That was crazy. Dude pulled that straight out of his ass. <laughs> From punching his girl three times in the head, allegedly, to she attacked him. He needed to eliminate the threat. You can't make this stuff up, man. All right, D, who's the best lawyer? JMO. And why am, I the best, why am I the best lawyer? He Mike Tyson, what are you gonna beat the case up? Before you hired JMO, did you think you were gonna go to jail for 50 years? Interesting. They, they, they was like, there's no way I'm not going to prison. What do you think the value of what JMO did with your case here was? Yeah, freedom is priceless. Like, this lively, my livelihood, so I take that real. That's days I'm missing. You got a family? Yeah, kids. A lot of them. I'm, I'm a real hands-on person. I'm in my kids' life, so it's like, they trying to take take that away from sure. me, so ain't no money in the world to change that. Congratulations, gotcha. Dre. Good work, man. Dre, this is your motion to dismiss. All right, this is your ticket showing that you're done. All right? For both? 20 years. No, the other one's set for trial. Ooh. That's good? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Go do what you gotta do, and then call me. Wow. Interesting. just happened. Three dismissals today. Hey, he looks happy. Yeah, yeah, he's very, very happy. He's, he's a free man. Mm. All right, so we approach the judge. You got bond conditions. Mm -hmm. um, look at me. I'm going to kill this case. For sure. <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right, so you're about to go get drug tested. If they test you today, you going to test positive for any drugs? Positive? Yeah. Did you? No. Are you gonna... for sure. Sure. If you test positive for weed or any other type of drugs, the reason why you're testing positive is because you're around people who do that. Right. And it, because of secondhand inhalation, it's in your system. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Oh, uh, yeah, welcome. Okay. And um, if someone catches weed in your system, where did that come from? A secondhand smoke. So is this an average day? Average day. Yeah. Yeah, well, in these Harris are grinders. County. In Harris County. Jay was grinding his balls off, going from case to case to case, opening door by door by door. The client wants to take a plea deal. This kind of hurts you a little bit. It hurts me because. Oh, you think you get a better deal? Oh, no. I think I can get this case dismissed, but. No, I watched the video, dude. I watched the video. You put a crack pipe in your pocket. The dudes, the cop stopped you. And then when he stopped you, you were resisting a little bit of arrest at the time he was putting why, you in handcuffs. Why did, why did he come back and bust a U-turn then? Because he can do that. Cops can do that sh But he went and bust another U-turn. Yeah, they can do that. Cops can do 10 U-turns if they want to. When I told them I was already going home. It don't matter. That, home. No, you put a fucking crack pipe in your pocket and they find you with drugs in your pocket. The fuck? While JMO is getting a case dismissed, to my surprise, I met this nice young man outside. Jesus. Uh, what were you charged with? Terroristic threat. Terroristic threat? Against President Biden? No. <laughs> what is the charge? Uh, two girls. Okay. Like, we're, I'm gonna blow your house up, or? It was a shooting threat. Okay. Um, 
uh, what were you, did it, how did it play out? Well, I'm still in court right now. Um, I imagine, wait, obviously, that was- Wait, how could it be terrorism, what? Like an empty threat? Yes. Allegedly, assuming it even happened. Allegedly. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I hope the best for you. Any kids watching, don't do terroristic threats? Never. All right, <laughs> all right, you go get him, go kill him. Look at that smile, you can't take that off. You don't get overwhelmed by the sheer quantity of cases? No, no, because it's all here. Yeah? Yeah. Your uh, photographic memory? Uh, going down. I think so. But sadly, not everyone here at court today was as lucky to have someone like Jay Elmo willing to attack their case, no matter the allegations or the overwhelming evidence going against them. Oh, they got public defender. We met you at the security, and I just saw you pop out of court. Um, it went well. I am um, happy with what happened. I mean, I did what I was accused of, so I did guilty. Play guilty. I did, yes. Um, first offense, but everything works out the way it's supposed to. Okay. What were you accused of? Uh, DWI. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was a year ago and I made some pretty bad decisions, so. Okay. Any but, advice to anyone watching? Um, just own up to what you did. I mean, it's so much easier if you just are honest. Yeah, don't snitch on yourself. Ooh, do not snitch yeah, on yourself. I don't think so. Do you um, regret defending any of your clients? Never, 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 never. Because it's always an honor to do that. Oh. What if you had a client that went on to commit mass murder? Then they do that. Okay. Then they call me. <laughs> okay, so you, have you ever had any moral dilemmas in your head of like, man, what if I release a super villain with some great, great defense? No, not at all. Uh, I see every person who comes across my table is um, a person who needs help. Okay. And I don't look at their personal issues, their religion, their their past sins. They just need help, just like how a yeah, doctor helps somebody who needs knee surgery. I'm in for the kill right now. <laughs> he smells blood in the water. He's going in for the not guilty right now. He will acquit. All right, we'll be able to win now. Good luck, Alan. That's All right, Alan's going in. Oh, I'm getting those shark eyes, man. He's ready. All right, is he bringing out his client? Who will win, the defense? Or the prosecutors. Okay, it's looking good or no? How did it go? Fourth quarter post game interview, tell me. All right, so Judge Granite, it was that quick. And then now my client is uh, free to take off the interlock off his car. So. What? Yeah. Not, no 20 years. Dude, 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 dude why, did, why did they have this like that? Like, it, it's insane that you're like on this, but there's like this gray area, right? There's like a, this buffer zone where they're always gonna go for more, like charge for, for max, whatever. And whatever actually happened is probably like, down whatever, and I get it, I get it, I get it. Like, you have to play your cards right, so that it lands, it lands about like where, where things should be at, right? Because they'll always go for, always go for max, always go for the fucking like, oh yeah, that happened, plus stack the charge, whatever, fucking, and, and they got played right then. But like, act, acting smug and shit like that, and, and, and doing like, like the whole like dance and, and charade, bro, it just makes, it just makes it look bad. Prison. No, no, like, definitely not. Like, it just makes, it just makes it look bad. It does though, like it makes it makes the profession look like like some like some clown show. What no, you did it? Just no, no. This is this is a different case. This is um, the DWI case. So he has a bond condition to keep a interlock on his car, which means he has to blow on it. Because we know this happens behind closed doors, like when the lawyers like don't speak as much and they're more like PR or whatever. This guy's like like doing this whole thing for fucking marketing or whatever, right? But dude, it, it's like. He's just like playing it up and shit like that and being really deliberate about it. It's just really shameless. It's like what you would call being shameless. No, it's what it is. So you don't have to worry about it. It's just, no it's just stupid. No felony as of now. No felony as of then. All right, next case. You did it? I think so. Dude, hell yeah. Isn't that crazy? Okay. He's so fast. He's keep, he keeps going. We get a who's the best lawyer? Jayoma. Hey, who's, who's the best lawyer? Jayoma. There we go. He knows you, man. Your fame goes far and wide. You're a, you're a celebrity lawyer now. <laughs> Is also lawyers. I am a lawyer, yes. Are you a prosecutor or a defense attorney? Defense attorney. Okay. Yes. What defense is the best part about being a defense attorney? I get to help uh, innocent people every day. I'm saving their lives. I'm keeping them out of jail, getting their case dismissed. Does anyone get ever one come to you and said like, I am guilty, but I don't want to go to jail? Yes. What do you say time. to that? I say, don't tell anyone that. I got you. Okay. We're gonna fight for you. Or not. Don't t tell anyone you're guilty. What is one piece of advice um, for any criminal out there right now? Just keep your mouth shut. Turns out most good criminal defense attorneys think like this. This former prosecutor brought up an interesting point. I think people fail to understand that we're not for crime. Okay, we're for upholding the Constitution. Sure. And so this has only been um, my first year since I've been a criminal defense attorney. And I can tell you it's opened my mind and my eyes to a lot of things that 
prior other defense attorneys who I've worked with would tell me. Um, and so I think it's very important because we are responsible for protecting the Constitution. Sure. And so again, we, are, we don't like crime, but what we do want to make sure is that each individual is represented fairly. I've seen many times people's constitutional rights violated. Sure. And so it brings me a lot of joy when I'm able to point those things out and I'm able to get certain cases dismissed. Thank you. Bye, Felicia. Uh, not by police. Right now. <laughs> by police. I, I get take care. The time. I got you. Do you have any thoughts about Jelma? Jelma's uh, one of the best young attorneys, promising upcoming lawyers that I've met in a okay. long time. Yeah. That's a strong Yelp review right there. Why do you think that is, Jelma? Um, well, I'm relentless. Yes, he's like a shark. Once he smells the scent, he does not get off. You go for blood? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Straight for the jugular? Straight for the jugular. All the time. Okay. Do you have any enemies in this courtroom? Uh, no enemies, we're just opponents. By opponents, I'm talking prosecutors. Those who are trying to prove the criminals are guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and lock them up in prison. Let's talk to some. All right, I'm here with? Jonathan Ortiz. Okay, you went to law school with Jaoma. Yes, I did. And you're a prosecuting attorney? Yes, sir. A prosecutor? Yes, sir. What is the best thing about being a prosecutor? It's really helping out the our complainants, right? It's just being there for them, helping them out, making sure that justice is done. Uh, make sure that you consider, you know, the defendant, complainant, the community. I mean, it's just, it's good work. Do you like the fact that you can put criminals with evidence behind bars? I mean, it's it's never, I mean, it's not like I like to enjoy doing it, right? I just- I mean, you could, hey, there's no wrong answer here. I'm genuinely curious. I mean, it's it's never good to send somebody to prison, right? Well, I mean, unless they're like a serial rapist or murderer. Yeah, I mean, you're a prosecuting attorney? Yes. What's the most- Oh, oh, but now you're gonna complain. Now you're saying cap, you're just doing all that. So if this guy, if this guy was like a, a prosecutor, right? He says, oh yeah, this guy, oh yeah, this guy wasn't guilty. I kind of knew it, but hey, listen, we we, hey, we played our cards right. If this evidence happened, this whatever, hey, we got him in jail, is what it is. Hey, we're all pulling the guns. Hey, yo, hey, yo, this guy wasn't really guilty. I kind of knew from the beginning, from the get-go. Eh, we kind of clapped in fucking 10 years. Fuck that piece of shit. It is what it is. Like, oh, now it's not okay. Oh, oh shit. Oh, now it's too far. Now it's weird. Like, dude, these, it's just cringe the way. Like oh my God, yeah, this chat. Right. You're a prosecuting attorney? Yes. What's the most interesting case you've done? Oh, oh my well, God. I just do assault family members, and it's always very interesting when the complainant actually wants to testify. Most of them don't. So one of mine came in, and she was very lively, and that ended up making us not win the case because she wasn't very likable. But it's not it's different then. Because it's not different. It's not different. It's not, it's not like it's not like oh 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 government this whatever. brother. You, you, this plays out the, the same way, the exact same way. If it's a civil case. So okay, same thing, right? If you were to play that like like civilly, it's like hey, this is some fucked up shit. Yeah, but I mean, dude, look, we boast about this guy. We know no shit is like this. It's like, dude, just don't be deliberate and weird about it. It's not that hard. Like it just makes everybody look stupid as fuck. I guess what are the biggest flaws in the legal system, if any, from your perspective? Just too many cases, not enough time, and yeah, we we just really overworked. Yeah, it's a safe place to give me an answer, honestly. No, no, I understand. And sometimes, I mean, it does, it does feel good, okay. depending on the type of crime. But I mean, I'm not saying today, but you got mad when I brought up this guy. Uh, well, how would you yeah, feel if he boasted about getting some right? guy guilty when he wasn't? It is right to send him to prison. Okay. Do you think jail was like the real life Better Call Saul? Um. But Asian? Huh? I'll have to think about that. Could be. He could be. Okay. There he is. Uh, it's just, it's like a chess game. Like me and you playing a chess game. That's all it is. Okay. There's nothing crazy about that. And afterwards, good. we shake hands. Got it. Right, they have it's not personal. No, no. But sometimes that. it has to get personal. Um, I've seen it where it can get personal, but to me, I feel like that's a waste of time. Has anyone ever confessed to you that they've committed murder? Yeah. <laughs> so, but, I mean... Allegedly, of course. Allegedly, but it's like... It's not they weren't in the right state of mind when they said that, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, well, of course. But my curiosity was piqued. What drives Jaoma to fight to keep the bad guys out of jail versus in jail? So tell me, once you became an attorney, how did you decide to become a defense attorney versus a prosecutor? Um, so I was in the money the DA's office, big. and I was able to see the other side and how they just lock people up. And you know, I said, "Oh, I can do this. You know, I can I'm lock everybody up. That's that's my number one goal because I like to win." Um, and then one of the defense attorneys said, "Hey, just come see our side for a little bit." I said, "All right, I have no problem with that. You know, I'm curious." Sure. So I went to go see a trial, and there was a guy who was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The deadly weapon being a car. Wait, and winning it? Alleged that he tried to run over. 
bro, if you think about winning, when when a state when a state prosecutes somebody or charges somebody with, with something, they have a pretty high conviction rate. No, I mean, uh, you wanted to be wife, the one on the winning uh, if you prosecution side all the way. The whole trial was a three day trial. Uh, they found him guilty, and so yeah, probably gets a bunch of cases that are like unwinnable shit. Speaking to, shit speaking to you, yeah, and it was just normal stuff. You know where. You know, we're cordial, we're fine, we're joking around. And it's really like, he's looking at 20 years. He was arguing, I uh, found him guilty, and the client started crying. And so that touched me the first time. And the second time is, um, you know, the deputies came around him, there's three of them surrounding him, treated him like property. He was no longer like, cool anymore. Put your hands behind your back, um, you're coming with us, and he's just sobbing. And so a grown man cry is different from like, a fake cry. So then we went to go visit him at the jail, and um, the attorney that I was with, First thing he said was, don't kill yourself. Oh. And then the guy looked him in the face, looked me in the face, and he just sobbed, and he was like, and he gave this impression that I might as well just do it. Because he was, I think, 45 at the time. So that's pretty much his whole life, right? Sure. But then I found out that later on, that there was a retrial that was granted because uh, one of the prosecutors withheld evidence. So and that- He's crooked. Yeah, yeah, and that, w that evidence was uh, a recording of the girl saying, if you don't pay for my shit or do what I want you to do, I'm gonna make up this lie and you're gonna pay for it. And so the whole system went through and he was found guilty, but he didn't do it. And that evidence would have helped his trial. So if he had a better defense attorney, his okay. life wouldn't have been ruined. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that's why I fight for all the evidence that's out there because it's really important. If you don't get that, that guy was looking at 20 years. Um, and then now he's free and walking. So it's one of those things where you just, oh my God, you were just about to go 20 years and then you're out. So that touched me and I said, you know what? There's more people vulnerable in this world. And I need to put all my talents and my effort into protecting the public. So that's why I became a defense attorney. Jayoma saw his clients the same way as a doctor would someone with an injury. He was here to help them, regardless of what their alleged crime was. And while it's easy to morally criticize his work for some of the viral supervillains that Jayoma helped free back onto the streets, some are just... Okay, the way I see this is a slippery slope, right? If you say, yeah, you want to defend this person, the person says, yeah, I want to defend my community, right? Evidence comes up, it's like, okay, yeah, they, they withhold it or some shit like that, right? And, and, and they don't present it, right? Technically, he's doing the best that he can with what he has, right? If you do that, if you do that on, their, on his side, oh, easy, poggers, guy, guy gets delivered. And you do that on the prosecution side, oh, that's crooked, that's weird. Brother, you cannot have it both ways. Like, if both lawyers are trying to, are trying to win their case and protect their defendant or whatever, dude, like, you cannot have this both ways. You can't. It's, it's one of the laws, like, you know when they have the little skills on, on the law thing? Well, they, they, that's what it is. It's balance. It's like, like this, this is just like some... The bad side of an hey, it's what you don't understand about this. This guy charged with allegedly possessing marijuana. What's going on, man? You're looking good, man. I'm looking good. How, How are you? Yeah, good, morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. We have some bad news today. Really? Pray for me, Nana. Pray for him. I love you, too. A slippery slope is not always right a fallacy. I don't know. Okay. Nervous. <laughs> okay. What do you think the chances of your case being dismissed are? Highly chances, no probable cause. So okay. Okay. I should be good, probably. I don't know though. Okay. We're gonna see if we can find out right now. All right, well, let's find out. All right, Jamar. You doing good? Yeah, I'm good. You remember the last thing I told you when I left? Yeah, my kids gonna get dismissed. Yeah, that's my get this case dismissed. So let me tell you, I got this dismissed. This guy was on your case. Why I do that? Because I, I love this job. And not only that, but it's my way to give back. You know why it was dismissed? Yeah. My name was on this case. So that's the reputation that I built for myself, is that I always try to make an example of each case so then everybody can see what I do and what can happen to your case if you don't dismiss it. So oftentimes, it kind of gives a message to any prosecutor out there that if my name is on the case, yeah. just don't f*** with it. Just, yeah. Hey, Jayoma, can you do this thing? Do it, do it, do it. Chat, Jayoma. chat. Imagine if there was a, some civil case in chat, like fucking Walmart, right? And they were, and the main lawyer was involved on TikTok, and he's like, "Yo, dude, yeah, this guy, yeah, we know he didn't steal, but you know what we did? We buried this motherfucking paperwork, brother. With this guy, he had like, like five years of fucking lawsuits, paperwork out the wazoo. He had to pay a whole fucking a whole law firm for fucking five years straight. So, hey, hey, so he he didn't pursue." It is what it is. Clap that fucking dumb poor bitch ass brokey. It is what it is. Like, dude, dude, Im dude imagine if you don't TikTok, you would lose your shit. What do you think she's gonna say? I don't know. She's gonna be hype, right? She should be. She should. We have some bad news. <laughs>
Tell, yeah. tell her what happened. Bro, my kids got dismissed, bro. What? <laughs> What's going through your head? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm excited. Okay. You guys going to celebrate after this? Yeah, we're going to celebrate. We're going to have a baby. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm happy. With one young dude freed from his weed charges, Jaoma and I walked to the local prison to check in on one of his clients waiting to hear an update from him. At that moment, I realized Jaoma was married to the game. And Jaoma, how often do you come here? I see this on your story all the time. Uh, I come here as often as I can. Uh, whenever I have some updates from my clients who are in the jail, then I come here and give them an update. So then I can do whatever I can to just make sure that they know I'm here and I'm not leaving. You're kind of doing this as like a psychological, emotional check-in on these people. Yeah, yeah, because... Like, you're not alone. I'm here for you. We're going to figure this out. You're not alone. Um, your family hired me to be here, so I'm here. And I want to make sure you get an update of everything that I'm doing on the case and then what the, the progress of that case. And let's see you go in there. They know you by name? Yes, J. Elmer. J. Elmer, are you a mobile lawyer? Will you take a call anywhere, anytime? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it doesn't matter to me because people need me. So what if you're getting freaky with a, a 10 out of 10? Getting freaky... I think I'll still take that call. Actually? Yeah, I really would. You don't watch any, um, like, Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad? No, 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 no. Just some random things that are just, you know, day by day. And there's some video games, too. So what do you play? Uh, Red Dead Redemption. And then Grand Theft Auto 6, I should be, should be coming out, and I'm excited for that. Woo! So if they can only put me in there as an attorney Ooh. in GTA 6, I'll be down for it. You have to pay me. Okay, Rockstar, if you're watching this, put Jaoma in the game. That would be Jeez, crazy. Man. Yeah. I Holy! Bet you that actually is possible. Okay, so I'm here with Yamie. Yamie. Okay. Where are we at right now? Um, Harris County Jail. Uh, why are we here? Um, I'm here visiting my husband, and so is Jayoma. Okay. And what is Jayoma in relation to your husband? He's representing him. Okay. Does this experience have affected you having your loved one in jail? Uh, very hard. Just yeah. um, you know, he's been there for six months, so just okay. dealing with you know life to life. Um, it's it's been really hard. Okay. And Jayoma. What are your thoughts on dismissing the case? Do you think it's possible? I'm doing whatever I can to get it dismissed. Okay. So it's ironic that I ran into her because okay. I'm gonna go visit him. Today. Visit him today. So. Okay. Yeah. You have faith in this guy? Yes. How important is this information you're about to bring to your client? Oh, it's very important. The charge is um, it's involving children, so I can't talk about the charge, but it's pretty, pretty bad, bad, crazy accusations. So I want to make sure that you know I'm not I'm not leaving him. I'm here, and that you know I have to make sure that the truth is shown. That's your job. Yeah. All right, Saul. So, <clears throat> Jaoma, go get him. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, chat, hey, chat, hey, chat, 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 do the thing, chat. Do the chat. Defend it. Chat, do the thing. One man. Come on, chat. the entire criminal justice system. But while Jaoma is casually dismissing some of the worst charges imaginable, you have to wonder oh. how Jaoma became Jaoma. All right, Jaoma, where are we in front uh, of now? Now it's different. We're in front of South Texas College of Law. This is the oldest law school in Houston? It is. What led you to come here? When I first started, I grew up in Ailey, Texas. Went to Ailey Hastings High School, which you guys will see later. And then from there, I went to Houston Community College to be a nurse. So I was a nurse for a good amount of time in my life. And then from then, I decided I wanted to become a lawyer. And I stumbled upon South Texas College of Law. And real quick, what took you from being a nurse? Well, no, right, yeah, to I just, I just don't like double standards these days. I fucking hate it. Aspect. So being a nurse, you don't really have an opponent. You don't have like a thing that you can win. There's no moving target. You have a disease, you just treat it with antibiotics or whatever it needs to be done. And it was very boring. And what I did enjoy about sports was there's always Wait, one nurses? winner and one loser. And I was thinking, what kind of career can I get to be fulfilled in that type of aspect? And that's when I thought about law. I didn't like doctors, so they treated me bad. And did you play sports growing up as a kid? Were you super competitive? I was very, very competitive. Yeah, I played football, track, uh, basketball. I was fat. I was 400 pounds. 400 pounds? pounds? Yes. You That's what me. No, I was playing offensive lineman. I'll send you pictures. <laughs> How did you lose 200 pounds? Uh, a lot of running and a lot of salads. This is never before heard jail malore. No. During the whole entire time, uh, I ended up working retail. I was getting paid $8 an hour, and all I cared about was uh, just trying to eat that day. To put it into perspective, I could only afford one bowl of Chipotle in a day, and I had to divide that into threes. So the morning I ate one third, afternoon I ate one third, and nighttime, and that was all I could eat. I if mean, I looked down, I couldn't see my dick. That's how fat I was. How were you running four minute miles if you were 400 pounds? Hey, just because you're a big guy <laughs> doesn't mean you're slow. No <laughs> way! Yeah, I'm knocking people out. like. So just like this mentality is transferred over to the court. Yeah, you have to be aggressive. 
kill or be killed? There you go. I went here from 2016, I believe, to 2017 winter. You came in here with tattered clothes and a hole in your shoe, and you're like, damn, this better be worth it? Yeah, yeah. So I remember studying my butt off. I'm 100% of the I got water. I'm living off my savings, and no money's coming in. And I remember it was rainy, it was cold. I was wearing tattered clothing, and I recall uh, leaving the building, coming right around this corner, and just saying it better be f***ing worth it because life sucks so bad right now. And did you think you would go on to achieve this dream of owning a practice and it being this successful? I did. I had 100% belief in myself that I would do it. It was just how we're going to get it done. That's where the whole story comes through right after law school. Did you have natural talent for law? I would say that I was very nervous for public speaking. As of right now, for me to even speak in front of a judge would make me, well back then, it would make me tremble. Do you think the average person gives up on their dreams right when they're about to achieve them? <laughs> yes. Yes, so I say just keep going. I chose this law school because you, it had a reputation of being a killer in the courtroom. And I always thought that nobody would respect you as an attorney or your legal threats if you can't back it up going to trial. And I learned a lot from the, uh, the law school and the, the training at trial. After seeing the law school Jayoma grinded to barely be able to afford, we headed over to Bissonette Street near the apartment Jayoma grew up in. Like 10 drug dealers behind me right now. This is the red light district known for prostitution. Jayoma was growing up in the trenches out here. All right, we're in Bissonette, also known as the Blade, the red light district here in Houston. Jayoma, you grew up here? I did, Court Glen, 9700. That's where <laughs> I grew up, right down these streets. This place is no joke. I used to run around here all the time. How you doing, man? What's all doing? Oh, hey, we're both just doing a little documentary with Jayoma. He's a criminal oh, defense. Attorney. I do criminal defense. You see my face before? Oh. And I grew up here. No, 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 no. I'm an attorney. I help, uh, he I help people who are charged. Yeah. If you get charged with a crime, I got your back. Yeah. I don't work for the Jesus, cops. Bro. I, help that. I help people who get charged with a crime. You know what I'm saying? If you got any cases, you, I got you. All right, let me get my card. I, I grew up here, right down over there. All right, I got you, I got you, I got you. Um, so, Jayoma, these, uh, a lot of people you defend probably come from here, or what? Yeah, probably. Uh, it was really, really poor, but, you know, you had a lot of friends, and we'd always get into stupid trouble, we'd do stupid sh uh, that's just being a kid. And then, uh, good thing that we didn't get any charges, but it was close. We're kind of in the trenches right now, yeah? Yeah, we are. Okay, so you went to high school here? I did. Were you a villain back then? Uh, I guess you could say that. So this is when you were a tank, and this is when you were taking people's food, too? Yeah, yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much of a menace were you? I wasn't that bad. I would say like probably like a 5 or 6. Did you get girls back then? No, no. Nobody wants somebody who's 400 pounds. Do you think without football, well, you he's got two haircuts. Up, um, as one of the clients that you defend? Yes, <laughs> exactly. And then there was actually a heartbreak story when it comes to that. Tell me more. All right, so I believe one of the first girlfriends I had broke my heart. I was a nurse, and um, I was dating her for a couple times. All of a sudden, after about, I don't know, two months, cold turkey just dropped dead, stopped talking to me. And didn't pick up my phone calls, and I was worried. I thought something happened to her. And then I kept calling like two days later. Then um, her friend called me and said, hey, this person doesn't want to talk to you anymore. And I said, why, why? She owes me an explanation. So then I got her to come out, and this is after nursing. And she said, um, what, what do you want? I want to know what's going on. Like, what, why you just stop talking? Because that's rude. And uh, she said, um, you know, she got a new guy, and she said this. She, she looked at me dead in the eye, and she goes, you're a nurse. He's a, he's a stockbroker. <laughs> and that's so exactly. you're poor and you're not cool? Yeah, pretty much. And that stuck with me to this day. You're a nurse. He's a stockbroker. I literally remember it every time I do things in my life. And it actually motivates me. Whether it be poverty, obesity, or heartbreak, a common theme in Jayoma's life is him relentlessly attacking and killing any obstacle that's ever gotten in his way and creating possibilities seemingly out of thin air to achieve his dreams. But he didn't get here without getting his hands a little dirty. How do you dress when you're not in a suit? I've never seen you in anything but a suit. Are you about to see it tonight? Actually? Yeah. I'm not gonna wear a suit tonight. Why would I wear a suit tonight? Well, where are we going tonight? We're gonna go to a place that uh, I used to dance at at one time and uh, it's gonna be a fun experience. Things are about to get freaky. I don't even know what to expect. No, so, Jam, um, are you gay? No. I used to be a male stripper over here. Okay. And this is one of the best entertainment that we have going on in Houston, Texas. And your job as a male stripper funded your entire law firm? The entire law firm, from having zero to having what I have now, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this place, this opportunity, the community, and Tony the man himself. And how long were you a male stripper? For about two years. Those two years were rough. Shit, I'd come bro. Here at nighttime, <laughs> and in the mornings I'd be in court. Warrior by day, dancing by night. And look who we have, Tony. Tony. Hey, Tony, who are you? My name is Tony Vaccaro. Can I take you for a walk? Let's go. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, Jayoma, how long have you guys known each other? Since I started here. 
Two okay. years. That's for two years. How was this guy? Beautiful. Beautiful. Can we see some moves tonight? No. No moves. No? Yes. no? You did this to fund your dream and Tony was your supporter? Like he, uh, he allowed me to come dance here, introduce me to the staff, and everybody has been so welcoming. Did you think your dream would take you to being a male stripper to fund that dream? No. Did you think you would come here to make that dream a reality? I didn't know that. All I knew, I was getting paid $8 an hour. It's hard to build a dream that way, especially if you're working 40 hours or 40 plus hours for retail. So here was just a better opportunity and I only had to work maybe three days, two days. Man, this story's been your girlfriend think bouncing that you back and a forth. Male time stripper and lawyer. We broke up. We broke up because of this. Yeah, she because of this, and it was her idea. All right, we got to see you take a shot. Oh, you're taking a doubler right there. That's a tripler. All right, I'll take one. Let's go. Tony, have you missed this guy? Yes. Yeah. Was he good stuff? Yes. We have rules. One of them is to use this as a stepping stone. Okay. Do you think so that's he's what he talking did? whenever you're talking to a, a fan. <laughs> to opportunities and Tony, and thank you so much for everything. To opportunities and to Tony. How was Jayoma as a dancer? I know you're a good dancer from what I hear. He was the one that, um, the best right here. Actually? Yeah. yeah. You're not just saying this because we have an iPhone. No, 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 no. He was the one that. Wait, is he just going How naked was like that? As a dancer. He needed work, but you know. <laughs> I showed him a couple of moves, how to swing a thing. He was pretty good, man. He was entertaining because there, there is a competition right here, and everybody's in, in competition. Yeah, this guy made it, made it like a muff. It seems like Jaoma can succeed in whatever he puts his mind to. From the pole to the bar exam, Jaoma's life story is an example of the American dream coming true. In a soft world, always looking for excuses, Jaoma looks for blood, and that's why he'll beat you and your case. What's a message for the people watching at home that they should walk away with? Don't ever give up on your dreams, right? Like use every stepping stone, every opportunity to get to where you want to get to. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't let your fear stop you. Man, Tony's in a zone at the back of there, man. Holy. And Jayoma, if anyone out there needs your legal well, representation, Tony is in the fucking zone. Jayoma Look at Lawford, him build, bro. Uh, on any type of social media. No, the marriage are right back. Com. Just give us a call. And Jayoma, you gave me this fresh t-shirt. I'm one of one right now. Can they Yes. Jayomalaw.com. Find us. Damn, the only done back now. Damn, they actually came back. The fuck?